So hello YouTube and welcome to another review and this time we have Airfix's Waterloo French Infantry. This kit was released in 1972. It is very very old and for that effect there is some issues with this kit involving sculpting, posing and just a slight bit of accuracy issues here and there. Aside from that most of the kit is actually okay so you'll get away with this kit so don't worry if you bought the battle set you're worried about what you read on the internet or whatever it's not that bad and you'll get away with the figures this chap here the horse normally with airfix there is slight issues with the horse this one actually went together very well and it was quite a joy to just put this together it did literally just slot into the pegs so no issues with the horse on that the actual officer on the horse doesn't sit 100% well but he does sit there quite tightly so that is a bonus you'll see he's just sitting off the horse there but something like that can be easily rectified so don't worry too much there is an injector pin mark through the horse saddle and we do have the remnants of an injector pin mark on the officer himself on his back aside from that you can tell he's an officer he does have a plate just below his neck and that's fairly obvious there he's not carrying any excess strapping across his chest it's literally just his standard button tunic and his shako on top showing the shorter plume on top of the shako which does mark him as infantry unfortunately he doesn't have a scabbard for his sword I can't see anything relevant on the back there or hanging down his leg. I could be mistaken, there might be something hanging down his boot, but that's still probably... I don't think it is really. Detail on these figures is not too bad, there is quite an element of detail here. I do think the sculptor did have talent, just somewhat misguided in how to tackle the figures anatomically. They are slightly barrel chested and the horse pose itself is very good I quite like the horse but the figures themselves are a little bit barrel chested but the majority of the poses where they do get them right and that's the standard posing is fine so you don't really need to worry too much officer himself looks fairly accurate there's a slight shoulder flashing on top of the shoulder which should be about appropriate so a little bit of braiding there I'm absolutely positive there is you can just about see the eagle on, on his shako and he does appear to be wearing riding boots so all in all not a bad figure now given the age of this set as I've already said you know we do have to accept some things aren't going to be right is there better kits out there of course there is but if you got this in the battle set, you don't think you'd be too disappointed, so don't worry. I think this is about the only infantry set you can get with a with a rider, a mounted officer. I don't think any of the other makers of the French infantry set for this period will have a mounted officer. So on that sense, you know, there is an added bonus there, because I do think it's quite important. This set is 28, 38, 48 years old. That is a long time so other competitors do have a march on this kit there's no doubt about it but now that i've seen this kit which i have i don't think it's as bad as what you might think so let's move on to our next figure so here we have our first infantry figure now this guy seems to be either checking the dead or killing somebody possibly on the floor however he is looking up so I'm presuming it's just a steady cautious advance so that's about all I can see on that figure kit wise very appropriate seems to have everything in order his cartridge pouch does look a bit on the small side but aside from that we seem to have everything there I can clearly see almost a sabre cutting sword and I'm not too sure about the scabbard for the bayonet so not quite sure about that but this sabre does seem to have a rather curve on it so that's definitely not a bayonet aside from that there's a lot of detail on these chaps he's got his cross belt um, 
he seems to have his hand on the flint action the lever on top where the flint is he does seem to have a rather nice moustache and whether or not you guys can pick that out I'm not sure but quite nice gaiters yeah it's quite good it's quite good the pose is a little bit strange but having said that there is quite a few poses in this set but yeah it's it's, uh, it's different I'll give you that musket would be the Charleville musket which I think was present in the French army from about 1740 right the way up to about 1840 and um, obviously there have been different variations going up through the years but that was basically the musket you won't be able to tell what musket that is the detail isn't enough obviously but that would be the musket they would use and obviously wearing the shako which was pretty much standard for the french infantry at the time these i think are pretty much marked as fusiliers um I can't see anything else that they would be so just your standard French infantry nothing to shout about just standard French infantry so here we have our next French soldier again he is advancing very cautiously not as hunched as the previous chap but again he is advancing very slowly very sort of hunched but um, I guess he's obviously filled with trepidation whatever he's doing but again it's packed with equipment detail is very good and just it just gets a little bit lost where the saber is uh, I don't quite know what's going on in that area the detail just doesn't come through enough but the bayonet is not bad considering the size of these things 172 23 millimeters in height obviously 24 mil would be round about 172 but it depends on locations and countries and you know various different types of heights throughout the world and the human population uh, but there just where his arm is you can see daylight through there which is another good touch so you know the guy who did these did have talent it's just sort of anatomically speaking maybe not 100 percent but don't despair they're not bad soldiers but yeah good so here we have quite a fine fellow marching along and this is quite a good figure but the marching ones are normally quite good in these sets they are nice to see and this chap's no exception nice detail on the backpack I can quite clearly see the sabre I'm not sure about the bayonet again but whether or not these guys would have two forms of weaponry like that on, on the backs I, I think is doubtful especially given the time period where Napoleon certainly would have been a little bit strapped but quite a nice figure just hope the white isn't too white on this when I take a look back at the video I may have to tweak it slightly so you can see the detail we'll wait and see hand isn't too bad you can actually see it is a hand he's got it slightly cupped but yeah not a, not a bad figure and you can tell it's just ordinary infantry the pompon as I'd like to call it on the top of the shako is very small which on the infantry it was if you were you know light infantry regiment or even a, a grenadier or whatever it would actually be quite tall but this one's very short on the top of the shako so don't think that's just not come through in the mold that's about the right height it would be so the little pompon on the top of the shako is about correct again the cartridge pouch what I presume is the cartridge pouch is very much to the rear of the figure and very small looking so um, I don't really buy that I think that's a little bit inaccurate and uh, it's a bit of a shame should be more to the side and a bit bigger in my opinion but what do I know and you can just see the French eagle on the shako as well our traditional 
airfix firing pose I say traditional airfix firing pose I mean you know you have to do a pose like this uh, regardless of the maker but that's quite a nice figure as well given the age of these I mean what am I 40 so these must be about yeah 8 is 80 28 there 38 48 years old this kit 48 years old yeah I like that I think the bayonet's just about come through enough the hand sort of loses itself in the musket but you know if you get this set part of the battle set don't despair you know we've read the reviews on this kit it is old some of the poses we haven't got to those yet are, are a bit iffy but uh, they're not bad these figures like this are perfectly usable So if you are familiar with this set or maybe you've just read about it this is probably the figure that attracts quite a bit of attention in the fact that he is a bit bizarre. Now the jacket is showing quite a bit of movement so we know he's moving. He's got one foot off the ground. The stand does have that strange little flap on it um, just at the base there which you can see. He's leaning forward. He does appear to have his musket at a funny, uncomfortable position. It pushed up hard against his head and he's holding obviously the flint and probably the trigger mechanism of the rifle, or sorry, musket. Um, and it's just looks, it does look very, very awkward. Which is a shame because, you know, if the musket was just a little bit more comfortable looking this would have been quite a good figure it does show quite a bit of movement there but he's got a funny gait on his legs even if he is walking that is a strange gait uh, so this figure is probably a bit of a weak link in the set having said that again the guy who did these did have talent uh, and that's unquestionably the the strangest thing about the whole thing. I hope the shot's okay because he's going down so forward. I'm just worried the lens isn't going to pick that up, but we'll see. His pouch is more to the side, but I think that's just a, a basically obscure thing that's happened in the course of showing the movement where the, the tails of the jacket or literally flapping up so I think that's more by accident again gaiters bit of detail on the face on these you know not bad for the age but yeah very strange so this figure is kneeling to obviously repel Again, like the British Infantry and a couple of the sets before that, the actual butt is not going into the ground. So it is, you know, that's been the marker for, for this series all along. Just little lapses here and there, but given the time period and how much accuracy they were actually willing to go to is, is just a lot different. To what we make now i mean everything that gets done now there's a little bit more thought going in because the age of the collector's probably gone up and uh, people demand accuracy out of these kits he does look more or less like he's just sort of having a look around but i would actually figure that this was a kneeling to repel figure in a slight form square action So when you get figures like this, you can get away with it. It's absolutely fine. Are there better sets out there? Yes, there is. So here we go with our next figure and kneeling, having a shot, probably in cover. I don't think really the guys, 
advancing towards the British were doing much of this position, possibly a good farmhouse scenario where it changed hands a few times, hiding behind a wall. And this figure could certainly be used in that. Nothing wrong with this figure. So this figure again is another sort of strange one, mainly the position he's actually going at reloading his musket. What I can see is the detail is quite good, you can even see the hole through his cutlass or sabre, but the position is rather strange, he is leaning forward a bit and the musket on mine has just virtually disappeared, uh, which is a shame. I've had a look and all of mine are like that, so the musket, as you can probably just see, disappears into nothingness. And the leg, probably the front leg leaning in, is a little bit spindly, which is a shame, but you can quite clearly see the buttons on the gaiters on these. Uh, the guy has spent a bit of time on these. Would you get away with that? Um, I don't think it's too critical, but it's not great. Which is a bit of a shame. Yeah, I mean the weapon just loses itself. So that's not great. I'm not saying all of them will be like this. I'm pretty sure you might someone might have a bit of luck in some of these kits, but certainly on mine it didn't pull off. So the musket just disappears into nothingness really. And the forward facing leg is just a little bit spindly. Now here we have our guy carrying the casualty. Now trust me that is a man he does have over his shoulder. It could be anything, could be a sack of potatoes, but it is it, it is a man. It's not great, but um, we are where we are with this figure. And it's a shame because that could have really been a good a good figure but he just doesn't have he, he hasn't pulled this one off so the sculptor's just he's had the right idea but not pulled it off again the guy is leaning very much forward and i'm not sure if my camera is at the right height to show you this properly but all will will be all will be revealed i mean that's got to be pretty uncomfortable you're carrying a guy over your shoulder you've got the musket as well I'm pretty sure the musket you would probably have horizontal rather than vertical. Legs haven't quite come off on this figure either. They've gone really spindly and the mould just haven't, hasn't reached the, uh, the target really there. And even I'm having difficulty actually knowing where the, the foot starts and where the head finishes. But I believe the head, where it should be, is on the back of the soldier carrying him. A very useful pose, but um, you wouldn't want too many of these in this set. And it just hasn't quite worked. Not sure if any other manufacturers do that pose. Now this chap should be the star of the show. He isn't on one important detail, there is no French Eagle on top of the flag. Now I've checked on other sets I've seen online, now it hasn't been a problem with the mould, it just isn't there. So that's a slight bit of a shame with that and there's not much you can do about that really. I mean, some clever guy could probably put something on the top, possibly out some modelling clear, but is it worth it? Probably not. And that's a bit of a shame. To be honest, the flag pose itself, it, I quite like it. It's just a shame it hasn't got the French Eagle on. Another slight issue, the shaft of the flag looks very thin. The figure himself is fairly good. He has got an unusual gait again. But that, the pose and the way the flag is, you know, I find that very, very good. He's even got his 
a hand slightly on his hip there nice hole through the arm and that could have been so much better But again, I'm still going to say, I think the guy who did these did have talent, and just slightly misguided talent, but did have talent. Shame, because I quite like it. Now here's our bugler, and the bugle's come out really well. I'm quite impressed with that, given the age of the set. His legs are very tightly put together and in a way kind of do like the pose. I know Plastic Soldier did remark he's got the the bugle too far, you know his hand is really where the mouthpiece would be and, and that is a bit ridiculous. But having said that it, it does look quite good. Again leaning forward this guy really had something about leaning the figures forward. And whether or not it's to kind of put a bit of urgency in the figures, I'm not sure, but I think that's what he was trying to get. I mean, because the bugler does look like he's putting his heart and soul into that. And I think that's just his way of sort of communicating that pose. Detail hasn't come out very well on the back, so that's a little bit of a shame with that one. But I'm glad I'm seeing these figures for myself. So here's our drummer. Uh, would actually probably be quite good if you saw a rather drummer boy type. But uh, this is a fully grown chap. Nothing to distinguish him as a regimental drummer. Like the British set did have, uh, you know, a bit of pull on that front. Shoulder flashes. You could actually see he was a, a drummer in that sense. Uh, this one... He does just look like your ordinary infantryman. Again, legs tightly packed together on this one. So with this set, you either get the legs tightly together or the huge gait. Drumsticks kind of work. A bit of flash just to the arm. Uh, you could tidy that up. Shame it's a good pose. Quite interesting to do this set in a way because there has been huge question marks over it. Drum's quite large. You wouldn't want to be lugging that around all day but there you go. That's the price you have to pay. So here's our injured casualty. Uh, or he looks dead to me, completely dead. His feet are at a funny sort of position, really. Uh, it does look like he's been flattened. So, very important figure to have. And I don't think as many sets do a dead guy in them so much now. Uh, the only one I remember, other than this one in the Airfix kit, is probably in the Gurkha set at 172, the World War II set. And that has a a dead Gurkha in it which I um, always remember and that was quite a good set actually I don't think I've reviewed the 172 set of the Gurkhas I've done the 132 but important figure to have does look a bit odd with the feet uh, whether that was necessary to put the feet like that I think it was just difficult to sculpt the feet going probably more or less the correct direction so this figure in turn does look quite busted up two of those in the in this set so i think that's enough details a little bit hazy but yes it does seem to have the full complement of equipment just his musket missing So we'll head to the turntable and show the entire troop.